Before we start this video, I have two warnings. The first is that the following video contains graphic violence, in order to illustrate pathology that often occurs from traumatic injury. And second, the gameplay in this video was captured from The Last of Us Part 2 and may contain spoilers. In this video, I'll be reviewing crush injuries, which results from prolonged direct physical trauma from an external crushing force, from things like building collapse and earthquake entrapment injuries, heavy falling objects, high-speed motor vehicle accidents, or from repeat blunt force trauma involving the torso, limbs, or other parts of the body. Although, the injuries from blunt force trauma like this one typically occur from brief blows to the body, and usually result in different complications and mortality rates when compared to those injuries sustained from prolonged crush injuries. The actual damage caused to the underlying tissue in crush injuries is the result of a combination of direct physical trauma, ischemia, and reperfusion injury. Direct physical trauma to the underlying organs and tissues typically leads to things you would expect after being struck with an object at high velocity, like pulmonary and cardiac contusions, fractures, hemo or pneumothoraces, and other blunt solid or hollow viscous injuries. Injuries from ischemia occur from occlusion of venous outflow, leading to localized swelling, cellular death, muscular necrosis, vascular, and neurologic injury. And finally, reperfusion injury, which occurs once the limb or body part being compressed is extricated, or when repeated blunt force trauma is ceased, leading to a host of systemic metabolic derangements. This complex mechanism of injury means that the extent of injury and mortality rate are affected not only by the direct injury caused to the tissues in the area, but also the duration of time that the body is being crushed. So when that large piece of wood falls onto a person, not only would you expect all of the injuries resulting from the blunt trauma, like fractures and pneumothoraces, but you can also expect that the longer the person lies under this piece of wood, the worse the extent of the injuries become. But soft tissue injury also occurs when you lift that heavy object and relieve the compressive force on the body part, leading to a reperfusion injury and systemic complications. After prolonged compression and then subsequent release of this force, blood rushes back to the crushed area, and rapid swelling and inflammation occur along with the lysis of cells in this region leading to a transient increase in intravascular potassium, phosphorus, and myoglobin. As a result of this reperfusion, the patient may develop crush syndrome, which is a constellation of signs and symptoms such as severe hyperkalemia, acute kidney injury, multi-system organ failure, and even cardiac arrest and death. Injury can also result from the increased amount of swelling, particularly within a compartment within a limb, leading to acute compartment syndrome, but we'll talk more about this in another video. The initial management and treatment of these patients follows the typical assessment for all patients suffering from traumatic injuries. Airway and breathing is assessed for patency and adequate respirations. Sometimes these patients can present with large pneumothoraces, which require chest tubes or needle decompression. Patients with impending respiratory failure may require endotracheal intubation or a surgical airway. If present, bleeding or signs of shock should be controlled, and volume resuscitation started either with crystalloids or transfusions of blood, as clinically indicated. For patients with signs and symptoms concerning for crush syndrome, intravenous crystalloids is the mainstay in treatment and should be started early, including during the extrication of the entrapped patient. You may also consider the use of intravenous calcium, insulin and dextrose, and inhaled albuterol for cases of hyperkalemia. Ultimately, however, these patients may require hemodialysis to clear the metabolic derangements and to salvage kidney function. the other apostate. Clip her wings. Overall, mortality rate depends on the extent of the injury and the duration the crush injury was sustained for. 
40 to 70% of these people develop crush syndrome or other systemic complications, such as rhabdomyolysis, acute respiratory distress syndrome, or sepsis. This includes even those smaller injuries sustained from repeat blunt force trauma to a particular area of the body. For larger injuries, like those sustained from severe motor vehicle accidents, or those from collapsed buildings, or earthquakes, where the persons involved are entrapped under large objects or rubble, mortality rates have been quoted to be as high as 80%. So that's it on crush injuries. And again, we want to thank our friends over at Video Game Medicine for the gameplay footage. If you're interested in seeing more of The Last of Us gameplay, I'll leave their channel link in the description below. And as always, if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button, and if you haven't done so already, consider subscribing and clicking that notification bell to stay up to date when we post more videos like this one.